Hello, my name is Katherine Drummond of Gingerbread Girl Designs, and today's lesson is how to make a beautiful hand-stitched finish on the edge of a piece of needlework. If we look a little bit closer at these two pieces of needlework, you'll see that both of them have been finished with a beautiful hem-stitched edging. This is all done by hand, and it looks just as beautiful on the back as it does on the front. In order to work a hem stitch, you're going to need to gather a few supplies. So I have this piece of fabric with a square basted on it. This is going to represent a finished piece of needlework. So imagine this as a beautiful design that I want to add a hem stitch to. Then I'm going to need a tapestry needle. I have a number 24 tapestry needle here, which I'm going to use uh, to aid in cutting. I will also use a number 26 tapestry needle a little bit later to do some stitching with. And you'll need a pair of scissors. I like to have a pair that has a really nice uh, fine point and sharp blades. And then you'll need some basting thread. I'm going to use three colors because I'm going to stitch three separate lines of basting. And this will help you to see which lines are which. You don't have to use three different colors if you don't want to, but of course you can. And then um, a thread to do the hem stitching with. I'm going to use this number 12 pearl cotton. I like to choose a color that's as close as possible to the color of the fabric. So I'm going to follow the instructions for um, a design that I have called Blue Bells, and I'm gonna use the, the numbering that I've used for that. But you can vary the number of fabric threads uh, from what I've given to give um, a different size of a hem or a different size of a border around the stitching. And it's a good guideline to use to have as much room around the outside of the design as four times the hem that you want. If you take a look at this piece of needlework, this is the Bluebells design that I was talking about, and we're going to make a hem uh, similar to this one. This hem is uh, one half inch on 32 count fabric. So in order to make a hem like this, we want to have at least two inches all the way around the outside of the stitching. And this is the outside border of the stitching. So we want to have at least two inches all the way around that in order to make this half inch hem. So the first step in the instructions for bluebells for the hem is to count out from about the center of one side of the stitching, and this is gonna represent the outside of the stitching here, as I said before. So we're gonna count out from there, away from the center, eight fabric threads. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then I'm going to slide my needle under the ninth fabric thread until the eye is right under that fabric thread. Now I'm going to take my very sharp scissors and slide them into the eye of the needle and under that fabric thread and snip that. And in that way, we know that we've only caught one fabric thread. Now I'm going to remove that fabric thread completely all the way out to both sides. Remove the fabric thread all the way out to one side. Now we're just going to do that on the other side as well. So I think that you can see here that there is a fabric thread missing all the way across. And it is the ninth one out 
from this edge. Now I'm going to do that on the other three sides. Okay, as you can see, I have removed one fabric thread on each side. It's the ninth fabric thread out from the edge of the stitching on each side. And you can see it's been removed all the way out to the edge of the fabric on both sides. So now what we're going to do is take our scissors and we're going to, on one side, snip the next fabric thread out. And pull that out to the side. But we're not going to remove this one all the way. We're just going to remove it up to this point where it meets the line created by the fabric thread that was removed on the other side. Then I'm going to remove the fabric thread out to the other side. And again, just until it meets this other line created by removing this fabric thread. And once I've done that, I'm going to do the same thing on the other three sides. Okay, as you can see, we've got those second fabric threads pulled out just until they meet each other in these corners on all four sides of this square. Now what we want to do is we want to take one of these fabric threads and thread it onto our needle. And we're going to weave this thread into this space that was created by pulling out the first fabric thread. So you want to make sure that it's the thread coming from this side and you want to weave it back into this side. And you want to make sure that you are keeping the correct weaving structure. If you see here, you can see that this loose thread is coming out over top of this first fabric, vertical fabric thread here. So when we start weaving, we want to go under that and then go over, under, over, under. Ideally, all the way out to the edge of the fabric. I'm not going to be able to do that because my square is small in the center of my fabric. Uh, but if you have a larger design, then you'll have a lot more fabric thread to work with here. So you can see that looks not bad right now, but if you take your fingernail and just comb the fabric a little bit, it pushes the fabric thread sort of into place so that it lays a little bit better with the other fabric threads. And it's almost invisible now that that fabric thread was ever pulled out. So now we're going to do that with the rest of these loose fabric threads. As you can see, I have woven all of those loose fabric threads back into the spaces created by removing a fabric thread. And we're left with what looks like um, unblemished fabric, almost. So now what we're going to do is we're going to baste for folding and cutting of our hem stitch edge. If you recall, I told you that we wanted a one half inch hem on our piece. So we're going to count out 16 fabric threads from this space. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. And I'm going to baste a line between the 16th and the 17th fabric threads.
Okay, along this one side, I have a line basted between the 16th and 17th fabric threads out from this space. And the reason that I chose 16 fabric threads is because this is 32 count fabric, uh, which means that there are 32 fabric threads per inch. And to give me a half inch hem, we divide that in half, 16 fabric threads. Now, this doesn't have to be precision basting. Um, sometimes for particular purposes, you might want to count your basting for uh, stitch over four fabric threads and under four fabric threads or over five and under five or whatever precision uh, basting you want to do. This is just uh, as a guide for cutting and folding so it doesn't have to be precise. You can just stitch quickly uh, making sure that you're staying in between the 16th and 17th fabric threads. Now that I've done this one side, I'm going to do this same basting on the other three sides. So now you can see I've uh, completed the first round of basting all the way around. And there's 16 fabric threads in between this basting line and this line, uh, this space created by removing fabric threads. And it's the same on each side. Now we're going to repeat that process. We're going to count out from this basting line out another 16 fabric threads and baste another line. And we're going to do that on all four sides again. As you can see here, I now have a second line of basting all the way around. And this is again 16 fabric threads between the first line of basting and the second line of basting and 16 fabric threads between the space created by the removed fabric threads and the first line of basting. So these two sp spaces between these lines are the same size. We're going to do one more line of basting and this is going to be half as far out from the second line of basting as uh, these two spaces. So we're, it's going to be eight fabric threads out. Okay, all of that basting is done now. And I know that all of this basting seems a little bit tedious, but if you wanna have a really nice, tidy, hem-stitched edge, um, you'll actually find that this basting will help you out and save you time. So as you can see, I've done the three lines of basting on each side in different colors. I've got a coral, and a dark purple and a lighter pink. The lighter pink one's a little bit hard to see, but um, you can do your basting in colors that are a little, uh, a little bit easier to see. So this outermost basting line is a cutting line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to cut along that line. And I like to stay between the two fabric threads so it's a really nice, clean cut. So all the way around, we're going to do that on the other three sides as well. So the cutting's now complete. You can see that the outermost basting line is gone. There's just a couple of little bits left and you can remove those. The next step is to trim away the corners. So what you want to do is you want to trim um, a diagonally across each corner right at the point where the two lines for the second line of basting uh, meet. So right uh, in the corner of that line of purple and it's a good idea to get it as close to the perfect diagonal as possible and we're going to do that on all four sides pardon me all four corners
Now we're going to flip this over so we're working from the back and we're going to fold the corner right across so that the, the fold runs right through the corner of this, these two lines of the basting. So the, the corner of the innermost row of basting. And if you folded it correctly, you can line up your basting stitches here and line up your basting stitches here. And that way you know you've got a really good diagonal. And it should just touch that open square right there. And if you've used a linen, which I really like, then you can do this by finger pressing and it really holds the, the fold really well. If you've used an even weave that's not 100% linen, you might have to use an iron for this part. Um, so be really careful when you do that. You don't want to burn your fingers. That's the mom in me. And we're going to fold all four corners. The same way. Again, we're lining up the basting stitches here and here. And that way you know that your corner is at, is at the right angle. This will be a 45 degree angle here. Now we're going to fold the sides in and we'll fold right across this first line of basting and try and make sure that you're right on that line so that if you look at it from the edge you see those basting stitches right on the edge so the fold is basically right between the two fabric ribs and then we'll fold on the next line as well And make sure that you get that finger press or press with the iron right into the corner. That's how you make sure that you get a nice corner. Okay, as you can see, the fold sits right where that gap is and it's not going to show through from the front. Now I'm going to do that finger pressing on the other three sides as well. Okay, as you can see, I've done all my finger pressing here. And we're going to start working the hem stitch. Now the hem stitch, uh, in when you're actually making a hem, is worked from the back of the work. So I'm going to take just a few little back stitches inside the hem where it's not going to show to secure the, the thread. And I have threaded my number 26 tapestry needle with the number 12 pearl cotton that I showed you at the beginning of the video. All right, and that's nice and secure. So we're going to fold that up so that it sits where it's supposed to. And make sure that your fold goes right to the corner so that you have a really nice tidy corner. Now we're going to come up two fabric threads down from the corner. And I'm going to wrap around four, one, two, three, four fabric threads. In this area where the uh, fabric threads have been pulled out. Oops, I think I only caught three there. There we go, four. And we'll give 
that a bit of a pull to pull those fabric threads together. And then the needle goes down through the edge. of the hem and up two fabric threads down and at this point you probably want to pull out these basting stitches otherwise if you hem stitch over them they're really hard to pull out already I've only done one hem stitch and it's really hard to pull out because I stitched right through it so the better idea is to pull out the basting stitches before you start. Okay, that's gone now. All right, so we're just going to continue across, going around four fabric threads and pulling and down through the edge of the top of the top edge of the hem and up two fabric threads down from there and keep going across. Now if you are left-handed you'll probably find it easier to start on the right hand side and work this the other way. because as you see, I'm using a sewing motion and this motion would be very difficult to do with the left hand in this direction. But in the other direction, it would be just as easy as you see here. So I'm going to stitch all the way across to the corner and then I'll show you what to do with a corner. As you can see, I'm getting close to the corner here. And as you get close to the corner, you should check to see how many uh, fabric threads you have left to do your hem stitching over in this space where the fabric threads have been removed. So let's see, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's actually ideal because it is a multiple of four and I'm doing my hem stitches over four fabric threads. However, if you find that you have seven or nine uh, you can um, do your hem stitch uh, a couple of them over three or five fabric threads instead of four, just to compensate for that. You don't wanna do over six or over two because that'll look too different from the other ones. And you might want to um, spread out those stitches that are over a different number of fabric threads if you have to do more than one of them. So you might have to rip back a little bit, but uh, it actually won't be very noticeable to the eye um, if you do find that you have to compensate that way. Okay, so I've gotten all the way to the corner. Okay, so now I've gotten to the corner and I want to line up the other side so that I can start hem stitching across the next side. So I'll just make sure that Things are just as they should be here. Make sure the fold goes all the way to the corner on the next side. And as you see, when you have things lined up properly, you've got this lovely diagonal line to your corner. This is what's called a mitered corner. And uh, it's a very attractive corner, even from the back. From the front, it will just look like, um, I'll show you, it's just, the fabric continues, there's no line there. But from the back, um, you get this nice mitered corner. So what you want to do is take a couple of whip stitches here in the corner to secure uh, this part where this open square is. So just a couple of little tiny whip stitches. there and we'll bring our corner up and now what we'll do is whip stitch right to the point of the corner and use tiny stitches for your whip stitches because you don't really want them to show okay. 
alternatively you could use the ladder stitch which um, a whip stitch goes around and around and around and the ladder stitch goes back and forth and it's actually pretty invisible but a little trickier to do I'm going to get right into the edge of the fold on one side and right into the edge of the fold on the other side and go back and forth and the reason it's called a ladder stitch is because if you could see these stitches they would go across back and forth like a ladder like the rungs on a ladder yeah, you can see them here if I pull it apart So if I leave it a little bit loose, you'll see the ladder stitches. And they're not like perfect ladder rungs because I'm trying to go a little quickly here. But if it took a little bit more time, it would be a little tidier. Oops. Okay, so if I give, you can see the, the ladder stitches in here. If I give this a pull, that closes right up. And you can see the nice diagonal line of my mitered corner. Now I'm just going to run my needle uh, back up to the corner. You want to make sure that you're inside the hem so that you're not going to see that stitch from the front. I can't see my needle here, so I'm not going to see the stitch from the front. So I'll get right back up to the corner. Take a couple of these little whip stitches in here. And now I'm ready to start the next size, uh, pardon me, and now I'm ready to start the next side of hem stitching. And if you look from the front, you can see how nice that looks. You've got this lovely pattern of open holes, and you can barely see the little stitches there, and it makes a beautiful little finish for your piece of needlework. I hope that you've enjoyed this tutorial and that you find it useful for you. And I hope you enjoy the hem stitch as much as I do. Happy stitching.